Hi there, traders. Welcome to this live webinar with FXDD. My name is Chris, and today's educational webinar is going to be on this topic, how to build your trading method. So we're going to focus on all the aspects you need to know, what you should focus on, what not to focus on, and how should the trading plan in general look like. All right. So I think always a fun topic to talk about uh, game plans, basically a very important topic too, because often, uh, well, maybe not often, but Many times uh, traders dive into trading without pre-planning, pre-thinking, and this this approach is, is very important so that we have a sturdy fundament uh, how to tackle the markets in a more long-term consistent way. If we just jump in into trades, if we just jump in looking at uh, something that might look good, often the confidence is not there. Uh, the market makes a lot of ups and, ups and downs, basically, and as it does that, it kind of makes us scared, all kinds of emotions arise, and that makes the trading psychology so much more difficult. Whereas if we have a, a method that we trust and we are confident in, it is much easier to execute the trading plan as planned. And that in turn allows us to actually evaluate our performance, uh, our, our trading trading plan performance, our strategy performance uh, in uh, in the long term and, and with more, more information. Uh, so very important. Uh, so let's get started. All right. And uh, first of all, before we dive into today's topic, be aware of this risk disclaimer, explaining the fact that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. All right. So thank you for your attention on that. Let's move on with uh, the topic of today all right uh let me uh zoom into the powerpoint presentation so that you you can see that uh, with more detail all right there we go good we're good to go so three pillars basically uh i think are the backbone of any approach and uh, as you can see these are the three it is not only about strategy it is also about how we apply risk and how traders handle that plan. And these three things are not isolated factors either. They are connected in certain ways because if I take a 10% risk, which is way too much, by the way, that would be a, a breaking my own rule. But let's take this bad example as an example. Then, of course, from a trading psychology point of view, it would be more difficult to implement the plan as, as planned. Why? Because of the fact that I, I'm scared with risking that much, right? So to have a proper uh, approach or a, a proper kind of a plan, uh, you need to have all these things in balance, all these things working out so that uh, one doesn't disbalance it. Too much risk could do that. Being too emotional could do that. Not having a strategy could do that. Not having a good strategy could do that, right? So all these three things need to be addressed. All these three things need to be in harmony and, and balance. These are the three pillars of trading, all need their own kind of attention. And once they are all three addressed and in balance and, and in balance or balanced, then uh, then that's where consistency comes from and long-term results appear. Okay, so don't underestimate, don't underestimate risk management trading psychology specifically because a lot of traders dive into strategy, dive into entries, without enough thought or enough weighing sufficient importance to these other aspects. Okay, so that in mind, once you know we realize the importance of all these things, all these three things, uh, it is uh, the next step is to, to think about more you know, basically the training plan. Now, basically, we can have a webinar on all of these three things. Okay, risk management, trading technology, and strategy. Uh, that is for a separate time, a separate moment. I'm not going to dive into risk management, trading psychology, and strategy. I just want to make sure that as we discuss how to build your own trading method, that it's important to know that all these two things are important. I'm not going to dive into in this webinar how to build your risk management plan. That would be too long of a webinar. For the moment, I just want to address uh, you know, important things to consider when building your own trading method. When you are looking at, let's say, your strategy, your trading plan itself, okay, 
then it is important to distinguish different phases of when you're trading. Analysis, entries, trade management, and the exits. The tools you use for each part of these phases could be different. The way you look at the market could be different. The way you monitor it could be different. Uh, you know, you could maybe use moving averages for analysis, but not use it for entry. You could use fibs for entry, but not maybe for exits or trade management. The way you approach it, you can make it different. You can customize it, or you can use the same. But these are the four different phases where you want to have a clear plan on how you tackle and what you do in these moments. These are the four kind of steps uh, along the way. Analysis is basically anything that allows you to understand if there's an entry, very simply said. Some people make a lot of analysis, make it, some make it complicated, some make it very short. That all depends on you. Even uh, with analysis, I even mean rules-based systems. You're still analyzing whether the strategy has met all the rules. That is analyzing. You're analyzing whether the strategy has met your rules, even if it's a very strict. There could be different ways of analysis, very rules-based or a very loose and very discretionary, where a lot of the decisions derive from the context and from the moment from what's going on right now and uh, from your own experience based on the tools you make a judgment about that. Other traders would feel more comfortable with very fixed rules and have uh, basically a couple of steps they want to see so that the analysis is maybe quicker, right? Uh, and takes less time. So that depends from trader to trader. I do both. I have myself uh, discretionary system, like analysis that I share, wave analysis I share on FXDD, as well as Elite Currency, and uh, I share both. Uh, that that I share that wave analysis. That's a discretionary analysis. But I also have rules based systems. My own system is based on uh, patterns, basically price patterns, and it's based on moving averages, fibs, fractals, and I'm looking for a a series of of steps. Uh, where price is breaking moving averages, for instance. And from that point of view, that doesn't take too much time. When I look at the four-hour chart, it takes some time, don't get me wrong, but it's less than discretionary analysis. It's less than analyzing the wave patterns, right? Because I'm looking for a specific combination of uh, move, of price versus moving averages. So that, that goes quicker than if I am breaking down six time frames, uh, looking at all kinds of wave patterns. Obviously, that takes a lot more time. So I do both, and uh, but that's the first step because with analysis, we understand whether there is an entry, whether there is a setup or not. That's that's how it's done. Once we see a setup, of course, then uh, there are different ways of trading it. There are different ways of finding an entry. Then once we're in the trade, then there's how do I manage it? And uh, where do I exit with a profit or maybe a loss? Uh, the approach can be done, basically we gotta keep a couple of things in mind when building a, a method. First of all is, which tools do we use? Uh, how much time do I have to manage all of that? So how much time do I have to analyze? How much time do I have to enter? How much time do I have to manage, trade manage? And how much time do I have to exit? And uh, goals and style. So let me explain a little bit about all of these steps. So tools, uh, you know, how many tools do you want to use? What types of tools do you want to use? Uh, do you want to use tools at all? All of these are choices that you want to make. Personally, I go for a balanced approach where I use some indicators. I use price action, candlestick patterns, candles, and use a few tools. As I mentioned, moving averages, fibs, fractals, and some proprietary tools as well um, that belong to, to my method, which is called SWOT. Others might not do that. Others might just have candlesticks, only price action. Nenet also uses some indicators plus price action, but he uses a lot of Bollinger bands and uh, zones like that. So these bands he use, uses a lot and moving averages as well, by the way. Uh, so quite similar uh, in certain ways, but just different types of indicators. Uh, uh, so though that's important. You want to think about what suits you, what type of tools you like to work with, uh, what do you find interesting, right? And, and 
then stick to those, develop that experience with those tools rather than bouncing around from one tool to another because that doesn't give you the kind of the depth you need to, to become better and more experienced. Time is a very important aspect because you could, you know, one could have, someone could have once a day at a time to look at the charts. Uh, let's say uh, in the evenings at uh, 9 p.m., right? Well, that certainly has an impact on how a strategy and method is developed or what which method makes sense for you, right? The uh, intraday method might not make so much sense uh, because you can only look at it once a day, obviously. But uh, so you might want to think about daily charts and the management can not be as frequently. So you might want to look at closed daily candles, for instance. Or if you have time, but only like a couple of times a day, maybe four hour charts could be good. Uh, if you have a CF time, you could switch time frames. But as you got to make sure that whatever approach you choose, there is you have the time to execute it as you should. So if you know, you might have a lot of time in the morning. So you have a lot of time for analysis. You have maybe even time for entries, but you don't have much time to manage the trade because during the day you're not there, but you're back in the evening. So then you might want to place more emphasis on analysis and entries, not do much with trade management uh, because of that scheduling, you know, uh, your, your own schedule in that way. Everyone's going to have their own schedule. You just got to make sure that whatever method you choose, it fits within that schedule. And there's no conflict and there's no big burden on, uh, on you. Uh, goals are important too. What kind of goals do you have with your approach and your method? If you're 18 and you're just starting out, you know, in, in a certain way, you probably have quite a lot of time to build up experience and uh, to work on your approach and you might set more modest goals maybe if uh, if you are i don't know a student who is 28 you're maybe in more rush because uh, you may want to do it full-time and uh, before you rather than looking for maybe a full-time job just to give you an example all these goals matter because it, it determines what kind of profits you want to get out of the market with what kind of capital, what kind of costs you have, uh, how much income you need to cover those costs. Do you have any income from other things that could cover those costs? Or are you fully relied on trading or can you do something extra to support trading? All of these things matter. All of these factors are a role and uh, determine whether and how intensively, uh, you know, how intensive you trade and uh, what time frames, et cetera. Plus, of course, everyone has their own style. Some are more aggressive. Some are more conservative. Uh, some want to be in the market a lot. Some rather wait like a sniper for the setups to arrive. Everyone will have a sort of kind of own approach that feels comfortable to them. And that is a matter of testing and tinkering so that you find that, that method that, that suits you, that feels comfortable for you. Okay? And... Uh, that could be sometimes just a simple change. Sometimes more drastic changes are needed. That really, that's so, that is really very personal and depends on, on a case to case basis. But finding your style is something to keep in mind. If, uh, if you don't see, if you see something not really fully working for you, it might be time, it might be goals, it might be connected to your tools, but it could also just be a question of style. Maybe it's not a particular style that you like. Maybe, you're trading reversals, but you find out that it's really not for you reversals, that it just makes you nervous and uh, it's better to skip reversals. Just to give you an example. With regard to styles uh, or general methods, maybe better said, uh, often these are the most recognized ones. Maybe there are more out there. There are a lot of different price action ones as well, by the way. Not only Japanese candlesticks, but there are line charts, there are range bar, Renko bars, point and figure charts. Uh, I have probably forgot a few of them, uh, Haikanashi candles, right? Uh, and probably more that I haven't mentioned, I forgot. So a lot of types of charts. And just based on that, there's different ways of trading. Uh, all of that I just classify in price action, right? But it's 
basically purely looking at price as the most important factor, basically. Then you got technical analysis, which is also based on price, but indicators of price, moving averages, FIBs, um, you know, any kind of indicator like trend lines, oscillators, um, but also, you know, patterns, price patterns in general, chart patterns, you know, that depends. I guess you can see it as price action. You can see it as technical analysis. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe both. Then you have fundamental analysis, of course, looking at the bigger picture, interest rates, uh, trade balances, quantitative easing, monetary policy, budgets, deficits, all of that, and factoring in who is like to, likely to be the winner based on these fundamentals. Then you have mixed approaches, which combine some of these things and, and also news, which is fully looked at looking at, for instance, uh, interest rate decision, and then what is expected beforehand? What is the actual result? Is there a difference? How is the market likely to interpret that? And all these kind of stats will impact the market. Typically, could be quite a lot in a short period of time. And news traders are waiting for that news event to happen or just before the news event and trying to, to trade that news uh, for a short period of time often enough. Um, unless you're, you know, it could be a long-term position as well if you're trading maybe an on-farm payroll decision or something like that. But so it could be either very long or very short-term in a way. Uh, Nenit and I both mix price action and technical analysis. Not to say that the others are not good, it's just that we don't have experience, we're focused on this niche. Wave analysis, if you're curious, is I think considered part of a technical analysis, basically it's part of that branch. It's a subcategory of technical analysis, in my view at least. And uh, so yeah, that's our, that's our niche, that's our focus. Not to say that I don't add fundamentals, I think it's good to have some kind of idea about it. It's not a must, by the way, specifically when trading 15, 60 minute chart, 240 charts. I don't think it's a must at all. But uh, if trading weekly and monthly, then yes, I do think it is a must because in that case, those are very long-term time frames, definitely impacted by long-term fundamentals. And uh, then it's good to have an idea about the, the kind of leading fundamental factors that are pushing a currency pair in one direction probably or not, or, or if the price goes sideways, then it does make sense. Daily could be a mix depending on how the daily is traded. I personally don't use fundamentals for trading, but I do keep an eye on that just for my own information. I don't use news either, but I do basically, I am careful with trading before big news and skip trading sometimes before big news on lower time frames. Okay. But I don't trade that myself. So once you have a method, uh, it's good to evaluate it but in a balanced way. What does that mean? That means that one setup shouldn't, on the basis of one setup alone, we shouldn't make any harsh conclusions. That's why we have risk management so that any one loss shouldn't make a big dent in the trading capital if we have proper risk management. Because any strategy, any approach will have not only one loss, but a series of losses is normal. So we want to be able to survive that series of losses. So when evaluating, we can never judge a system or approach just based on one trade, let alone not, not, even, not, not, not even one trade, but even a series of trades. To really evaluate, so, have some idea, you need at least 40 to 50 trade setups to evaluate the performance of 40 to 50 setups at the minimum. And even 40 to 50 is on the short side. That's like the first moment you can do that. Not to say that that's an ideal moment or the best moment or a moment that says a lot. That's just the first moment. You really need hundreds of setups before you can judge the performance because it is about long-term consistency, not about uh, one trade that works out or not. One trade, you know, hoping that one trade works out or not is in a certain degree, it's not trading. It's just hoping. Uh, we can never know if one trade works out. As again, Once again, even a series of trades, even 40 to 50 trades is not representative necessarily. We're looking at long-term curve of trading with a lot of ups and downs. We have to keep the end goal in sight, which is really profitability 
after a, a lot of number, you know, a big number of setups. Uh, that's what it, our, the goal is not to make profits after two, three setups. That's not how it works. That's why we need to keep risk relatively small and make sure that, uh, you know, that this any drawdowns are okay and don't hurt us. But after 40 to 50 setups, uh, it's okay to take a look and see how the performance was. Is it below average, average, above average? Just to get a little bit of idea, that's fine. You can evaluate after 40, 50. Whether you change anything doesn't have to be. You, it depends on your phase, how far you are with the strategy development. I mean, if you just started out, it's a fair chance you might change some things after 40 to 50 setups, and that's okay. If you already have a more developed method or a final method, then the 40 to 50 won't probably change anything. But in any case, you want to evaluate it. You want to evaluate whether you implemented the strategy as you should have. If you didn't, then that might that might have been the mistake. If you did and you see a negative performance, then maybe it's the strategy's fault. But you always want to compare the plan to what you have done. And if it's the same, then you can fairly evaluate the strategy. Otherwise, uh, it, it might have been, let's say, the implementation of the plan could have been incorrect. And if you then see something interesting, like some, some improvement point, maybe you're cutting the wins, you're, you're seeing profits, but little profits, because maybe you're moving the trail stop loss too soon. And therefore, you don't give enough space to the trade. I'm just making an example here. Well, you might then opt to change that part of your trading plan that you let the trade more space, for instance. That, just to give you an example of that change. Whatever change you have or do, test that. And then, of course, see if that works better or not. And make that judgment. And you're basically trying to evolve and fine-tune your approach in a balanced way. We don't want to over-optimize either, but in a balanced way, it makes sense to fine-tune the method and, of course, improve that where where, and when possible uh, and, uh, and do that. So when you do have a method that is getting closer to the final version and or you have one already, then you want to have an idea about how can you measure kind of the long-term viability to the expectancy is by using this. I explained that in the last webinar already uh, is what you want to keep an eye on is this equation. Basically it's not only what's important is the win rate, but it's how much you win when you win and how much you lose when you lose last week. Uh, you know, I made, I won 56% of the trades, I believe. But uh, so not a huge win record, but the wins were 2.8, almost three times as big as the losses. So that helps with expectancy. Whatever, you know, f results you have, what you want to make sure is that when you win, what you win when you win is bigger than what, than what you lose, what you lose. And that's what this formula says. That's how you can judge uh, the performance. In the previous webinar, and if you want to take a look at the recording, you can find that on the FXDD YouTube channel. I also spoke about how the importance of T-statistic in measuring the long-term reliance, the reliability of your long-term, uh, of your strategy in the long-term. By using the T-statistic, you can calculate that. And why that's so important for uh, for understanding your perform your your strategy's performance, so check it out that uh, that webinar if you like with the FXDD YouTube channel. I think that was uh, a month ago. This gives you a little bit idea about the strategy's performance. Very important, of course. Uh, I, on average, with my method, looking at four-hour charts for the moment, though, typically see on average a long-term sixty percent win rate, forty percent loss rate and about one and a half times the reward to risk ratio. All right, now moving on to strategy. So when we're looking at strategy, what are good things to take into account? So one of those three things basically, 
again, a triangle of, uh, of analysis in the sense that I want to understand how I determine trend and impulse, how I determine support or resistance, and how I determine price patterns. Those three, three things make the make me understand the, the market structure, the chart in more detail. It gives me the, the tools, the, the concepts I need to understand what's going on and what might happen next. With trend, that's a certain direction. Support or resistance is where price uh, and the trend could stop. And the patterns indicate the market kind of psychology that could indicate whether the trend is continuing or stopping, whether the, the range is breaking or continuing, and whether support or resistance could be strong enough to stop a trend. Those patterns give a bit of a, a flavor. They are, give more meaning to what's going on besides trend and support or resistance. All of this is happening on multiple time frames. Each time frame has its own story, has its own development, has its own piece of the puzzle that's going to do next. And they all tie in together. So by analyzing multiple time frame, multiple time frames with these three things, we get a, an overall kind of view of what's going on. And uh, that is a very powerful way of analyzing the market. That's why I, when analyzing my, my analysis and my strategies are based on on these three on these three things, and um, yeah, that that's key for for my method, and I think very key for anyone's method. I think if you want to create a method, it would be good to think about these things at least. All right, and I know that some don't. I know that some methods only look at support or resistance. Some methods only look at patterns. Some only at trend. But I think if you if these three things are combined and connected that they they enhance uh, the approach even more so than just looking at one of these three things. Then let me grab a zip. I'm getting a little bit thirsty. All right. Then once the analysis is done, then it's about entry time. So what I do is I look at decision zones. I don't want to enter, let's say, in the, in the, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm looking for price to clearly determine, uh, reach a zone where it's likely to show a strong reaction, a breakout, a bounce. I, I'm looking for a trigger uh, that can confirm that expectation at the decision zone. And I'm looking for an entries uh, at that, uh, at that, after the trigger, which could be uh, based on a moving average break, a trend line break, a bounce at the fib. And of course, I'm adding a stop loss and take profit which determine the exit points. All right. Regarding the entry types, there are different ways of entering. Basically, I'm a trend trader. I'm a with a trend trader. But uh, you could be a reversal trader. You could be a range trader. It is typically better to focus on one, I would say, but not impossible to do all three necessarily. I did focus and I do focus on trends myself. Then there are different, different ways of trading breaks or bounces. So personally, I'm a breakout trader. I wait for price to confirm by pushing through a level. That's when I enter. Nanet is more of a bounce trader, I think. Uh, gets a little bit in earlier than me. Uh, and with regard to trend and range of reversals, I think that he does, it's more of a mix for him, I think. Probably more trend than reversals, whereas I'm more trend break, breakout combination. And uh, also there, there's a question of how do you enter? Do you wait for a pin bar to confirm the reversal bounce? Or do you just enter right there at market order without any candlestick pattern that can confirm a potential reversal? Just assuming that price will bounce at a particular support or resistance. Right? So uh, I am more of a confirmation trader. I am looking for... Uh, candlestick patterns to confirm the break within the trend. Okay, so that is my niche. And then it is a mix on, in, I think, uh, on on that. But uh, yeah, I think more of a mixture there. So that's things you want to think about when building your approach as well. What suits you? What makes sense? What feels good? What works for you? Then there are different types of uh, basically the exits, of course. So first of all, is the, the management once the trade is opened, there's the question of management. Do you not manage, which is passive management? Well, then 
in that case, basically, you just have an entry, stop loss, and TP at the very beginning, and you wait. You're just waiting for price to hit, stop loss, or take profit, and that's it. Nothing to do. That's passive. That works good for beginners because there's no rules to break. Well, there is a rule to, rule to break, but it's very clear that you can't do anything. Otherwise, you're breaking the rule. So it's easier to follow from that point of view, and for some at least, easier. Uh, that said, it's, the disadvantage is that all the new candles that arrive, all the new information that appears is not used. That's a pity in a way, right? You got all these bunch of informations that are arriving candle by candle on different time frames, one by one, and you can't use that because the rules are saying you're just waiting. So all this, you know, let's say there's a huge bearish daily engulfing twin. No, can't use that, right? So there is a lot of uh, lost information there as, as price uh, and the charts are updated with new, new candles. So that's the advantage of active management where you say, oh, I'll use that information. The market looks weak uh, and I'm going to exit. The market exit. I'm going to have a trail stop loss. I'm going to close half the position. I'm going to move the take, take profit closer, uh, et cetera, right? Or the market looks good. I will uh, hang on to my target or I'll move my target even further or I'll move my target closer on half the position or I will use part of the trail. Uh, you know, you have basically the option to change the parameters depending on that new information. If passive management is used, I personally recommend, and what I also use myself, is an approach that I call uh, loose tight, loose tight. So at the beginning, I'm loose and I wait for the trade to develop. I don't want to be too tight with my any you know any active trade management decision. I want to give the trade time to develop. But if I after I have given the trade some time, at least a couple of candles of the entry chart. Then I might think about being a little bit tighter. If I see that price is struggling or price has gone my way, I might also want to be moving the trail stop loss a little bit, maybe getting to break even or cutting the loss short or locking in some profit. Once I've done that, I want to be loose again, give the, the you know, space and time for the trade to hit the target. And once price gets close to the target, then I might want to be tight again to lock in as much of that profit as possible. So that is passive, sorry, that's active management. But whatever the case, when creating a method, keep in mind timing. Often, if you're backtesting, you don't realize how many candles it took before price hit the target. You just see price hitting the target uh, because you're backtesting and you can see uh, the development of those candles quickly. If you're living through candle by candle, the fact that uh, it might take 70 hours before your target gets hit on average is good info to know because that means that if you're in a trade for three hours, there's nothing to worry about necessarily, right? Whereas if you don't have that info, you might think after three hours, why did my target not get hit, get nervous, and maybe uh, do some unfortunate decisions based on that. Whereas if you realize that the, yeah, the timing aspect of it you might be more patient, justly more patient in uh, in applying your trade plan. That's important. And of course, finally, exiting obviously is the last step. That's how you book the profit or uh, basically accept a loss. And nothing wrong with accepting losses because if we didn't accept a loss, we'll be risking all our capital on one trade because there would be no stop loss, basically. So probably. So that, that's not good. You want to have a capped risk of, uh, you know, anything up to 5% typically is considered okay. 5% is a lot though still, you know, but still okay. More commonly, 2-3% is used, 1-3%. Uh, and uh, less than 1% is, is a more conservative approach. Depends a little bit on your goals, capital, your style. That is very personal. Now, uh, let's see. What type of indicators do you use? You want to think about that. Are they manual ones that you have to draw yourself? Semi-automated ones like fibs that you draw on them. You draw it once. You know, they have a certain value. 
but eventually they lose their value. Uh, let me find a different example. Maybe trend lines, you know, you draw it once, they keep their value though, after you draw it for a certain while. Fully automated, of course, is moving averages, pivot points. Those are, you don't have to do anything. The, the information is calculated automatically with, uh, with each and every candle or at least, you know, after a certain period. Personally, I use a mix. I use moving averages and fractals. Those are fully automated. Fibs are, uh, yeah, in a way, manual or semi-automated. And uh, yeah, basically, mostly are fully automated indicators. I mean, automated is maybe the bad word. It's not like, I'm not talking about entry or exit automation. I'm not talking about the EA. I'm just meaning that the indicators, are they updated or not automatically? That's what I meant. All right, that's it, actually. Great. I didn't realize that. I thought I had one more slide left, but uh, fine. So are there any questions at this point? Well, once again, if you want to join these live webinars, feel free to do so with these links. Top one is trading webinars from Nenita and myself. Bottom one is live educational webinars, educational webinars. All of these webinars, all of these videos are uploaded to the FXDD YouTube channel as well. Okay. You can find all of that there. So that's why it's good to subscribe or join live and or join live, do both, maybe the best. So all in all, as a summary, whatever strategy you use, whether it's your own one that you create or whether you uh, use one from someone else that you know, maybe me or Nenet, that's up to you. You can even first try out someone else's and then maybe tweak it to suit your style, for instance, as possible too. But most importantly is that you find a method that suits you, your, your trading style, your uh, way of life, your time, you know, your goals. And uh, that's, that's just a little bit of a, a journey in the sense that you start somewhere and where you start is probably not where you end. Typically, you, you gain experience, you learn, you change, and slowly but surely you're getting to a spot where let's say you're getting close to a final version of, or well not final, final, but some type of final version where you trade. Even with the final version, I'm not saying that there will never be changes, right? But uh, of course, there'll be improvement points along the way, but they get less frequent. As you get more experience, the, the updates and upgrades will be less so. At the beginning, these changes are more regular. That's normal. The more experience you have, the more comfortable you feel with that approach the less there will be to, to tweak and change. Um, by myself, for instance, I didn't change my method in years. And uh, only recently I added new things, new indicators, new ideas, and uh, which have helped my trading, I think, and uh, make me more confident in my approach. So that's a good thing. And I was, uh, I'm happy I did that, but it's not something I do regularly anymore, whereas, 10 years ago, eight years ago, sure, I was um, well on the way to creating my SWAT method. But uh, of course, there were many things that were different, many things that changed in the meantime. And those changes do tend to happen more at the beginning than, of course, and slow down as, as you progress, I would say, with experience. Okay, so... Hope I didn't scare you <laughs> and uh, didn't discourage you from trying this. Uh, certainly, there are just uh, a lot, of, you know, some things to think about when starting. But I think it's an exciting process as well. I think it's uh, a fun process. I think it's inspirational to create methods. I, I love doing it, and uh, I love, you know, testing strategies and testing systems. And you know, there's a difference between a system and a method in the sense, in the sense that I have this method. And I have different ways of trading that method based on the same approach, but there are slight differences, kind of like sub strategies and strategies that belong to that method, right? That's exciting. I, I love trying out new things with the approach that I have and, uh, you know, trying out different tactics. And that still makes that still very interesting to me. I don't do it as often as in the past, but when I, when I do that, it's fun. I like it. And uh, I gladly continue with that work uh, when I have time again. I recently added some updates to, to my strategies, for instance. But I have more ideas. Um, 
I need a little bit more time, <laughs> but I guess maybe next year I will have time again. And I gladly look forward to to looking into new new potential strategies. It's always fun within kind of the the method within the method I use. Uh, whether you know you do that or not really depends on uh, yeah what you're looking for. And uh, but it's a, for me a fun process. It's probably not fun for everyone, but I like it. I enjoy that. If you are looking to create a method, your own, or some version of someone else's, some changes, keep these steps in mind, and uh, hopefully they help, uh, you know, create, give you the crutches and give you the ideas needed to uh, to fully finalize your, your kind of approach, whether it's your own or someone else's, and uh, that hopefully that uh, that strategy and approach gives you that long-term consistency that we all need. All right, so that's it for now. Thank you for joining. I'm going to be back, of course, soon with more webinars, Nana, tomorrow already. And uh, obviously, uh, I think uh, next week, more webinars and August too, even in August, although Nana and I both have some small uh, vacations lined up in that time. We're still coming, continuing with those webinars as well in August, certainly so. And uh, above all, wish you good trading and uh, a great rest of the day. Cheers. Bye-bye.